morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Uh, this is the first time that many of us will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus outside of church buildings. And the global pandemic has the world upside down. But no matter what the circumstances are or how we gather together, the message of Easter remains the same. Jesus is the hope of the world. And so Easter upside down is what we have today. Right now, there are 2.3 billion believers on the planet. That's one out of every three people on this planet celebrating the greatest event in the history of the world, the resurrection of God's Son, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ. And that's happening virtually all around the world through pixels and decibels in people's homes, in essential workplaces, military bases, hospitals, distribution centers, wherever we could travel. The tomb is empty, the stone has been rolled away, and Christ is risen. And that fact changes absolutely everything. Nothing, nothing, nothing can stop Easter. And I also want to make a point that both Easter and Passover followed a very difficult time, and then the deliverance, and then there was a huge celebration. Now, we see in our own social structures at this ease, uh, people, people are consuming, everyone has different coping mechanisms, and people are consuming a lot more alcohol. I have one source that said he usually goes through uh, 40 cases of alcohol per week, and he's up to 1,400 cases per week. We're all binge eating. Unfortunately, domestic violence is on the rise, and New York is a mess. It's the epicenter. People are experiencing, it is two to 300 cardiac arrests per day with people due to anxiety, panic attacks. People are stroking. Uh, there's been deaths of, of people that were very young, uh, and there's the cruelty of dying alone. I mean, that in and of itself is what brought Mother Teresa to the streets of Calcutta. Healing will begin to happen when people care. And our own care workers, our essential workers, they're overwhelmed on the front lines. The sheer size of the impact and ease of transmission has everyone completely on edge. The planet's broke, and a time like this can bring out the worst in people and the best in people. And, and as the Church of Christ, this is a a terrible wake-up call that was, wasn't brought on by God. This was brought on by us. And, but we're now more aware of our own frailty and our weaknesses before the Lord than ever before. We all need the same thing, and for once, we're all aware of it. It's time for global prayer without ceasing. Prayer for God to heal our land. Pray for the peace and comfort uh, of those who are struggling with anxiety and PTSD and depression at this time. There was a king of the southern king of Israel. His name was Jehoshaphat, but let's call him Geo because anyone with that name, I'm sure he didn't like his name. So Geo for short. Geo was about to get attacked by three big armies. I mean, about a million people, and he had nowhere near the size to, to combat that. And what he said, and this, and this virus is like an attack. Don't, don't get me wrong. It hit us hard and fast, and it hit us by surprise. And he basically went before the Lord, and he prayed, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And that is exactly where we should be pointing each other right now. Now, Jesus told us in John 11, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. I am the resurrection and the life. I mean, to be clear, a resurrection is when something dies and then what happens? It comes back to life. And Easter reminds us that our bodies are not who we are. They're but a shell. And absent from the body present with the Lord, your last breath here will be your first celestial breath in heaven. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And nothing can change that. God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And, and the message that we have is more needed now than ever before. Because the world is on the tiptoe of uncertainty. We need the good news of Jesus. We need to anchor ourselves to the promise of God. And we need prayer and community. And even though social distancing is, is, we are doing that, it doesn't mean that we have to distance relationally. God doesn't want us in isolation. We weren't made for that. You keep connecting over the phone, Zoom, Skype. As a matter of fact, after the service, we're having a, a Zoom coffee hour. And the link will be up on our Facebook page. But keep distancing social media, however it is, but keep in touch with people. Obviously, it has been a shift. And, you know, we've been stripped of our idols when you think about it. There's no, more, there's no more sports that we can go to. 
There's no going out for entertainment. There's no going out to, to the bars or the restaurants. Everything is shut down. But right now, people who never went to church, the church is coming to them in their homes. This is the time to fix our eyes on Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Why? Because the kingdom of God is advancing. It really is. Now, as believers, I've got to take it back to Romans 8. And I don't mean to minimize anything that anyone is going through. But this is a promise of God. He says, and we know, not guess, not hope, not think, not wish. He says, we know that's a certain hope. We know that in all things, not some things, but everything that happens in your life, we know that in all things, God works for the good. It doesn't say it's all good because there's nothing good about this virus. It's, it's bad. But it says that he can bring good out of it. And we might not understand that. We're like, well, why would he let this happen? And I can't answer all of that. That I don't know, but this I do know, that Jesus is standing right next to you and he's weeping right along with you. Jesus wept. Now, God specializes in bringing good out of bad. He turned the crucifixion into a resurrection. Come on. I mean, when Jesus died on the cross, that wasn't good. That was the darkest day, the darkest hour of mankind. Did God bring good out of it? Yeah, the salvation of humanity. Out of the greatest bad, he brings the greatest good. And when we run into opposition, he turns that into opportunity. Out of the worst circumstances, he somehow uses them for a greater good. I mean, just ask Martha and Mary about their brother Lazarus. God's a specialist. I mean, anybody could bring good out of good. Only God can bring good out of bad. And as I said, I don't mean to minimize anything that's happening right now, but he can take all the bad stuff that's happening to you and actually bring good out of it. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. So God's design for people everywhere always has been to experience a full life of blessing from the hand of God. But everything is upside down right now. And I'm sure the prophecy guys are running around claiming this is God's judgment against the world as a result of moral decline. What caused this? Why didn't you pray more? Whose fault is this? It's not a moral failure at all. Looking back in history, there was a plague of Cyprian that erupted right around Easter time. It's two, I'm going back to 250 AD. It reached Rome. The following year, it went into Greece, and then it went into Syria. And what would happen is people were fleeing the cities, and they were bringing it with them, much like the people that were running out of New York and going down to Florida and the Carolinas, and people were annoyed, right? But they were infecting the farmers because they'd go out to the country, which in turn affected the agriculture, which brought on major food shortages. And this lasted for a long, long time. And you know what their response was? The people aren't sacrificing to the gods enough. We need to do more child sacrifices. People aren't doing the right thing. Now, the Christian's response was to care for the sick and to provide care to bury the dead. That there was a breakdown of social structures, big shifts were on in play. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. What I see in scripture is God's kindness leads to repentance. It's the kindness of God, not the hammer of God. The way he keeps reaching out to us through all our rebellion, and, and he just keeps reaching out. It's the kindness of God that leads to repentance. There was an explosion of Christianity during and after that pandemic. As a church now, bringing us right now, as this church, any place we can add value, we will jump in. But any place that is out of our control, we will surrender to God. We're adding value. Right now, we're able to expand our food pantry. We're serving so many more families right now, but we're getting so many more donations into the food pantry too. It's amazing to see what God set in place before this happened. So just as a side note, if you care to donate to anything that we're doing, because we need the support, the Strictly On, you can go to www.butlercommunitychurch.org and we receive your donations there. And trust me, they'll be put to use for ministry. Now, like I said, any place that's out of our control, you get down on your knees and you surrender it to God, God the Father, just like Jesus did in the garden. I mean, everything started right side up until the world got turned upside down in another garden. 
they were naughty in the garden and the fall of humanity hit with a thud. The blessing of life as God intended was turned upside down with a curse that led to death. And the rest of the story is God setting out to make all that was turned upside down right side up by sending a savior who made the final choice to do the will of the father in another garden, the garden of Gethsemane. And you see the bookends of choice. Adam and Eve said, not your will, but our will. And Jesus said the opposite. Not my will be done, but yours be done. And at the cross, Jesus made the final way for that curse of sin to be reversed through the perfect sacrifice. God did his part in sending his son to do what nobody else can do. And after Jesus walked out of that tomb on Easter Sunday morning, all that was turned upside down by sin, once again was turned right side up. And it was through the stories of those that were with him that made known just how much he loved us and what he did for us. Now, I want you to hear from the Apostle Peter. So let's listen to what Peter has to say about all of this. Right here. This is where Jesus was kneeling when they uh, came and grabbed him. Um, and I, I, I came in from this direction with my sword drawn and I cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. I reacted exactly the way Jesus told us not to. Jesus, he picks up that man's ear, and he puts it right on his head, like it had always been there, but that's what he did. Jesus was always fixing people's messes. You know, um, I said I didn't know him that night. Three times. Three times. I denied my friend. He told me I was going to do it <laughs> before I even did it. And like an idiot, I argued with him. <laughs> but he was right. <laughs> He's always right. He told us he was going to die before he died. <laughs> but you know what he did? You know what he did when he came back to life? That morning when he came back to life, he gave me the opportunity to tell him I loved him. Three times. Three. He knew, he knew that was my greatest regret. But that's how he does it. And it settles here. It changes here. And that turns the past upside down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happened that night. Because of what happened that morning. Because he beat death. He is alive. <laughs> alive! 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 <laughs> Isn't it great when the Bible comes alive? 
Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Son of God, perfect in every way. And he willingly laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice and paid the full price for the sin of all people on earth. And Jesus made the only way for people living their lives upside down by hurts, habits, and hang-ups to be turned right side up into a new relationship with God. The good news of God was always intended for all people, for all the families of the earth, and for all nations. The resurrection is not an event. It's a person. The resurrection is not an event. It's a person. It's not what he does. It's who he is. And dead things don't stay dead when the resurrection walks in the room. I mean, Jairus found out when Jesus raised his daughter. And they all found out when Lazarus came out of the grave after four days. All hope was gone at that point. And Jesus called them out of the tomb. Come forth. Come out. And they gathered around a table that evening having dinner. Can you imagine the joy? It was not the end of the story then. It's not the end of the story now. And some of us feel dead inside right now. You may have lost your faith. You may be losing hope. It's you're dead in that delay. You're in the in-between spot. You're discouraged and you have doubts. I get it. We all feel trapped in our own tombs. We can't come out, right? We were afraid to go out. And some of us are suffering from PTSD, especially the, the med workers in New York. I mean, after 9-11, and now this is back, and it's so much larger. It's back with a vengeance, and their PTSD is going through the roof. And we don't feel like we have the strength to roll the stone away. On this Easter, I want you to remember that Christ has rolled the stone away. And that same voice that called Lazarus to come out is telling you, come out, come out. Come out of your fear, come out of your panic, come out of your anxiety, come out of your disbelief. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let Jesus put his arms around you and hold you when you're shaking like a leaf. Let him do that for you. Darren. Thank you. Sometimes my life just don't make sense at all. And the mountains look so big, and my faith just seems so small. So hold me, Jesus, as I'm shaking like a leaf. You have been my king of glory. Would you be my prince of peace? And I wake up in the night and feel the dark. It's so hot inside my soul. I swear there must be blisters on my heart. So hold me, Jesus, because I'm shaking like a leaf. You've been my king of glory. Would you be my Prince of Peace? Surrender don't come natural to me. I'd rather fight you for something I don't really want than take what you give that I need. And I beat my head against so many walls. Now I'm falling down. I'm falling on my knees. And the Salvation Band is playing this hymn grace rings out so deep it makes my resistance seem so thin hold me Jesus cause I'm shaking like a leaf you have been my king of glory won't you be my prince of peace so hold me Jesus cause I'm shaking like a leaf you have been my king of glory. Would you be my prince of peace? You have been my king of glory. Won't you be my prince of peace?
No, we all want somebody to fix things right away so we can get back to our normal routines, don't we? But as Christians, we have to get close enough to see into people, just like the Good Samaritan did. He got close enough to see. We should keep, keep in contact with people and let them tell you their stories. And don't offer the quick fix. Don't offer the Band-Aid right away. Healing occurs when people can tell their stories to someone who cares. Right, Michael? A group of women were the first to hear from the risen Jesus, and they began to understand. And they went and shared their story, which is the Easter story. And that they brought hope and healing. Give people your ear to tell their story. Sit, listen to them, whether it's on the phone or through a Zoom, whatever it is, but it's a good time for that. And confess to God for forgiveness, James tells us, but confess to people for healing. You know, we remember, those who grew up in my tradition, we remember going to con confession and you had to go into a closet or a box and with the fear of punishment and penance. And I'm not picking on anybody, I'm just saying this was my experience. And scripture tells us we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But when we tell our story to him, it opens us up for healing, not punishment. And when we get in a small group, which we're doing on Zoom meetings these days, every Tuesday, all our stories are different. But it's important to share them. And healing starts when people can tell their stories. And that's what God had in mind all along when Jesus summed it up. Love God and love people, not love God and judge people. That's above our pay grade. We can find freedom from hurts, habits, and hang-ups, not because you're strong, but because he's strong. And we have each other to lean on. You can feel his presence and he'll blow a fresh wind in your sails. Not because you deserve it, but because he's that good. Our sins can be forgiven. Not because you're good or trying to balance the scales. You can never be good enough. It's like the white light heat of a million nuclear reactors. You know, I mean, if it could have been any other way, he wouldn't have to send his son Jesus to die for us. But he did and Jesus did because they're that good. The resurrection is not what he does, it's who he is. And when Jesus gave up his spirit on the cross and shouted, it is finished, that was a victory cry. Tell a testi, the debt has been paid. I finished the work you gave me to do. And at that moment, the earth grew dark and shook. And everyone who had hoped that maybe he was the Messiah fell into deep despair and darkness. Just like the two on the Emmaus Road, they were in the middle space. And they're walking towards an unknown future. Nothing's clear. They saw Jesus crucified. And all their hopes and dreams were dashed to the ground along with it. And they're despondent. They're in despair. And they're walking along. But they're in the middle spot. Walking towards an unknown future where nothing was clear. It sounds like a lot of us today, right? I mean, we're all familiar with the in-between space. Due to the pandemic, it's like we're in a holding pattern. And we're wondering, you know, first it was the end of... Uh, April, and then it was going to be ready by Easter. Now it's the end of May, and who knows what happens by the end of May. We're in the space in between. We're wondering, will I still have work? Is this going to affect my income? I'm praying I don't get sick. I'm praying I, I don't want to bring it home to my parents or my children if I've been exposed. You know, we were living at such an accelerated pace of life, and then all of a sudden the world hit the brakes, and we've slowed down. But have we slowed down enough to know and see Jesus and know that he's with us. For the two travelers on the road to Emmaus, Jesus gave them the greatest Bible story ever. What a Bible lesson that was. The living word given it to them. I wish I could have been a fly on their shoulder. And when they got to their destination, he feigned like he was going further until they invited him in with them. See, God will never force himself on anyone. He's given us free will. But if he's knocking on a door, open the door of your heart and let him in. So he's at the table with them. We see it in Luke 24. And he took bread and gave it thanks. And then he broke it and began to give it to them. He was having communion with them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. Their eyes were opened and they said, were not our hearts burning within us when he opened up the scriptures to us? So the burning hearts came from the scriptures. And we need to know what God said right now. We need to know the promises of God and anchor ourselves to them. And for them, they were just getting started because the empty tomb was there. And new life is about to start for them. 
Now, I want to make something clear because I don't want to be a cheerleader. I, I, I'm not here to tell you everything is perfect and everybody's going to get healed and this will be over tomorrow and no more people are going to get sick. I'm not going to tell you, hey, you're going to win the lottery. There are new landscape shiftings and, and in the historic patterns and the pandemics, some areas did not go back to normal, but there was a new normal. But what I am going to tell you is God is always glorified by what happens because he will bring that good out of bad and we can go to him as a good, good father and receive things from his open hand. And so Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And because of what he did, not because we could ever earn it or deserve it, our sins can be forgiven and you can be made brand new. That's the gospel. It's the good news of God that he did something that we could never do for ourselves. And he's that good. The tomb is empty. He is risen. After the resurrection, everything changed. Everything changed. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in him will never die. And that's why they call it Easter Resurrection Day. God brings dead things back to life, including our dead hearts. Let's pray. Father, today... I pray that your word and your presence would build faith in your people. And as you pray today, I know there are many people out there that are hurting right now. And that we had enough struggles and trials in our lives. And then all of a sudden this global pandemic hit us hard and it hit us fast. I want to pray for those who are discouraged. And I know you have some doubts. And maybe you're wondering why God hasn't done what you thought he should have done. And you need prayer. And just between you and God right now, as an act of faith, say this. Yes, God, I want to reach towards you. I need a touch from you. I need your grace, and I need your mercy. Father, I thank you that you are good and so big that you know the intimate details of every situation of every person within the sound of my voice. Invade their homes with your presence, Lord. I pray you would be their ever-present help in a time of trouble. And your Holy Spirit would be our comforter. And please give us that peace that Jesus had when he was asleep during a nor'easter on the Sea of Galilee. Give us that which goes beyond our understanding. And as you pray today, I, I love the question Jesus asked. He said, I'm the resurrection. Do you believe this? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I always thought I had to try harder and be good and hopefully I'll balance the scales out. But there's forgiveness, there's grace, and there's healing. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how big your doubts are, how far you crossed over the line, or how far you messed up. You spill your milk, you wipe it up, you keep going. But when you come to him, he loves you, and he forgives you, and he makes you brand new. And he'll fill you with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Now, there are those listening today, and you're here for this very, very moment. And Jesus says the same thing he said to Lazarus. Come out. Come out. Give me your tears. Give me your fears. Give me your anger. Let me into your heart. Wherever you are, would you pray with the person that's next to you and follow me in this prayer? Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new. I believe you died and you are risen so I could be forgiven. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you for the rest of my life. Thank you for new life. Today I give you mine. And if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God because Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. And if you made that decision today, I would like to know about it. You can go to our website, butlercommunitychurch.org, and there's a contact there. Just send an email saying, Pastor Chuck, I prayed that prayer with you because I'd like to stay in touch with you. Happy Resurrection Day, everyone. Let's worship together. a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There 
has a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you. I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. 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 you. Jesus. Jesus. Amen.
הארץ הזאת היא הברית החדשה לדמים הנשפך אבי, מי אחד? אף אחד לא מוכיח. 